I have had dog shit, dog shit day game interactions where I was on edge. I just was on edge. It was maybe the first one of the day. I'm kind of nervous, the whole thing. I walk away from it almost like, fuck, why did I even bother with that texture? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Tuesday still sounds great. Sure. Back in my place. It's, it's, and I've had amazing interactions that they don't fucking text me back. So your internal idea, your internal judgment of this interaction should not be the determining factor in whether you should be going for the close or not. Always be closing. Hey, what's going on, boys? So, my name's Aaron Alexander, if you don't know who I am. I am Planet Earth's number one dating coach, and in this video, I'm gonna be telling you basically how to never fail at pulling girls home from nightclubs. So, whether you are looking to get married, whether you wanna get a girlfriend, it doesn't matter what you want, being able to go out to a nightclub and a bar and have a great time and have sex with a beautiful woman that you just met is absolutely a skill that you should acquire and that you should want to have because we see these these moments in movies these hollywood magic moments that seem so far out of reach of people falling in love or hooking up or they meet randomly on the streets of Paris and they have a romantic weekend getaway together and yet we sit on the outskirts of that never really being able to live out these experiences or to really have any kind of fulfillment romantically, sexually and it's really not a fun place to be in because it's happening all around you and you know it's happening but yet you, you can't seem to make it happen. So. When it comes to night game, especially going out to bars, going out to clubs, being social, having fun, meeting women, having sex with them, I'm gonna really help you out in this video right now. So, the number one issue when it comes to going out to the bars and having a good time. Next time you go out, pay attention. Pay attention to what's happening around you. Look at what most men in a nightclub or a bar are doing. Most of them are, it'll, it'll often be a pair. It'll be two guys. They will be standing there uh, at the bar along the edge of the dance floor and they will be sitting there with beers looking at the fun around them and what's going on around them. And they're not approaching women. And this video is not to give you the motivation to go up and approach. This video is sort of for when you're past that point and you, you are able to approach. Uh, so these guys are looking at girls, they're looking at the, the, the girls' asses and the girls grinding on other guys and girls grinding on each other. And, and basically they're sitting here and they're paralyzed and they're pretending that there was a reason why. So they start rationalizing, oh, that bitch is ugly. Oh, these fucking dumb club rat hoes, whatever they want to say. When in all actuality, it's because they can't go up and talk to these women. So once you're to the point of being able to talk to girls in nightclubs, the number one reason why you're not seeing results, why you're not getting laid, why you're not even getting, you're not getting anything, you're getting, not getting numbers, you're not getting laid, you're not getting a girlfriend from going out and meeting women, is because you're just not pulling the trigger on the pole. So oftentimes there's a, there's, a, there's a term called reverse rationalization. And so what reverse rationalization means is that you will rationalize going to a concert. Well, I don't have much money, the ticket's $100, but you know what? I was probably gonna spend that money that weekend anyway, I was probably gonna go to the bars, so you know what, I'm gonna go to the concert. That's rationalizing a decision. Reverse rationalizing is looking back at, why did I spend all that money on that concert? Well, it was fun, it was this, you've already done the action. So, 
the sooner that you can hook up with a chick, the more likely it is that you're gonna hook up with her again, and also even that you could end up dating her. This is just a fact. Um, women, especially attractive ones, are going to be having sex fairly regularly, and oftentimes, because they don't wanna feel like a little hoe, they are going to date a guy that they've already had sex with. And if you could be the guy that she has sex with, and now she reverse rationalizes and says, well, it could maybe go somewhere. This could, this could be a thing. Then the faster you have sex with a chick, the more likely it is you're gonna be able to get something more long-term from her. So you really wanna be aiming to have sex with chicks same night when you are out at, at bars and clubs. And for anybody watching this that thinks, well, some girls just aren't like that. Some girls are, you're right, you're right. Some girls aren't. But here's the meat of the video. Here's the most important part of this video and fucking congratulations if you made it this far because this is it right here, right now. Going for a pole does not ever equate to the end of an interaction. Write that down. Going for a pole does not ever equate to the end of an interaction. So I will go for a pole sometimes within minutes, sometimes within a couple of minutes. I mean, I've had great, I've had crazy life experiences, right? I've had, I've had literal, literal, and I have like one person in the world that can back me up on this. I have a literal one minute pole that happened one time. I've had a bunch of five to 10 minute poles. I mean, I've had crazy shit. But I've also had tons of times where I go for a pole within five, 10 minutes, and the girl isn't coming home with me, but I stick in there, we have fun, we have a good time. She still doesn't come home with me. I get her number, we end up going on a date, and then we end up hooking up, or she ends up becoming something serious. Go for the pole. You look weak not going for a pole. So it doesn't have to be this, hey, so I was thinking right now, you and I, we should go back to my place. It doesn't have to be that. You can be mid-conversation, she's talking to you about how, oh, that's really cool that you drive a Tesla. We actually uh, lived near the Tesla factory in LA, blah, blah, blah. That's, yeah, I wanna get one one day, cool. Why are we not, are, are we having a slumber party tonight? What do, you mean, what do you mean a slumber party? Yeah, just like a, you know, like a platonic slumber party. Oh, platonic, yeah, we're just gonna hold hands. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna play Uno. We're gonna watch The Lion King. Oh, really, that's all we're gonna do? I mean, may, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, what do you think this is? What do you think, I'm that easy? You could go for the poll, you can, you can talk about it. You can talk about the fact that you guys are gonna go home later. You can talk about, what time does this bar close? Uh, I think it closes at like two. Oh fuck, I'm gonna be up till like 5 a.m. Me too, I'm like kind of a night owl. That's okay, we'll go back to my place. Oh really, will we? Oh yeah, but trust me, I mean, nothing crazy. I don't try to make a move on me. I'm not that easy, I don't sleep with anybody until at least the 12th date. You can start talking in this way, going for these polls, and now she knows what's up. And when you're going for these polls, and then she sticks in there, you, you stick in there together, having a good time, even if she's rejecting you, now that sexual energy is brewing. It's your dick has been put on the table. Things are happening. And so when you're going into so many interactions and not going for polls, not future projecting, talking about dates you guys are gonna go on in the future, you're basically guaranteeing that nothing good is ever going to happen with this girl. So no matter what your own inclination is of, oh, she doesn't seem that into me. I don't see this going that far. I don't know what's happening here. I feel awkward, I'm kind of scared. Go for it anyway and find out. I could rant, I should do a whole podcast on all the times that I thought interactions were not going well. I didn't think anything was gonna happen. And then because I fucking mustered up some courage to try, then something happened. I've had dog shit, dog shit day game interactions where I was on edge, I just was on edge, it was maybe the first one of the day, I'm kind of nervous, the whole thing, I walk away from it almost like, fuck, why did I even bother with that texter? Yeah, sure, yeah, Tuesday still sounds great, sure. Back in my place. It's, it's, and I've had amazing interactions that they don't fucking text me back. So your internal idea, your internal judgment of this interaction 
should not be the determining factor in whether you should be going for the close or not. Always be closing. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. I hope some of you found this helpful. Some of you are going to find wives off of my content. That's just a fact. So I hope that you find a wife. And if you didn't, I want you to, well, you're going to, by, by the time you watch this video, I'm on a, I'm on a maniacal rant mode today, if you can't tell. Um, sign up for my mentorship. I just got off a call a little bit ago with a guy. He said at the end of the call, thank you so much. I literally can't believe I just got so much value from just the first call. We just started the mentorship. Um, so if you want to see what it's all about, the ways that I'm able to help you to really overcome these internal roadblocks inside of you, then uh, sign up down below. I'll include some links down below in the description. You can head over to evolutiondaily.com to find everything that you need to know about uh, and everything you need to work with me. But other than that, guys, go out there, fucking kill it. Leave a comment down below if you found this video helpful. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Always be closing, dude. Fucking close.